Hi Sagittarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for April 2018. So Sagittarius, before we jump in here, there is now a summer session for the Astrology 101 Basics class. In fact, there are two all throughout June, we will be studying and you can choose the AM or the PM session. So all of the details are in the description box down below. Hope to see you in class, okay? So coming into April, Sagittarius, we've got Mercury, our communication, mental, decision-making planet still retrograde in the sign of Aries. So for you, this is lighting up the fifth house space. So there could have been, since March, space where you're doing re-communicating with children, re-evaluating um, romance, re-evaluating a project or a business maybe that you've started, um, re-evaluating even for some of you art. Some of you may be learning lines. I know some of you are learning lines as we're coming into um, April here. Um, any of these things that are about self-expression, creativity, joy, play, I hope that many of you have reevaluated if you have enough play, if you're playing enough in your life, if you're playing with your children enough. Whatever it is, this communication space, this retrograde has been set up to help you look over this area to bring it a little bit more life as we move forward. Now, now at the beginning of the month, Month, on the second starting right out when we get into the month we've got Mars coming into a conjunction with Saturn now they're both in the sign of Capricorn and Capricorn has told us that we want to achieve we want to do something we want to move towards something so this energy of our action planet and our discipline planet come together and they really play well together and get some things done between the fourth and the fifth we're gonna see Mercury who's retrograde over here in your fifth house come into a square with this Mars Saturn conjunction. Now the square in astrology tells us, hey, I want attention. I want action. I want change. I want movement right now. It's not like an opposition where there's a lot of time. It will evoke a response from you, right? Now, so this square happening right here, what it could feel like is that you're kind of having this clash with all of this business in your second house and your communication in your fifth house. Maybe what's even happening is that you are having to be empowered, you're having to be moved, you're having to have this conversation that feels a little bit like anger, aggression, depression, and ultimately it's telling you, hey, I'm trying to help you grow up. You need a more mature action. I need you to take action. But whatever it is, it brings your determination and your movement to get to a goal, to get to a project, to get something done all the way up to the surface. It's really a beautiful energy. And it's great, especially here with Mercury being in that fifth house for stimulating a fair amount of creativity. But it shows you here in this energy that you can take something creative and especially after Mercury is direct, turn it into something profitable, something that has value. How amazing is that? It's hard work, but it's going to come out well on the other side is basically what that energy is about. Now, it's further supported on the 14th of April when we have Jupiter, who's also retrograde in Scorpio, coming into a sextile with Pluto over here in Capricorn in your second house. So in this energy that we see here, this is also this space between the 12th house coming into an opportunity with your second house. You don't have to force this. This energy is natural. It is. It brings success. You take a positive action, success comes from it. You may be bringing a project, a talent, a something out of a hidden place, and it has value, and now you have the opportunity. Because the sextile says is that not only is there a talent, not only is there an opportunity, but you will likely do something intelligent with it. Like you use it, you'll take some action on it. And what could also happen for you too is maybe somebody you didn't know was Team Sagittarius shows up and is actually acting in your favor. So this is a really wonderful energy to take advantage of. It's absolutely delicious. Now on the 15th, we have Mercury coming out of retrograde here in Aries in the fifth house, ready to go direct. Please keep in mind that Mercury does not leave um, shadow time until May 3rd. So We'll still have some residual retrograde energy, so still a little bit of revision, but things will basically be moving forward in terms of communication. This lights up great conversation if you're dating, romance, play, art with your children, joy, speaking joy out into the world. You've just reevaluated maybe where you don't have enough. Now whatever you've seen, you get to speak and bring into the world. 
make some decisions also uh, on maybe a new beginning, a new baby, a new business, a new whatever, a new relationship. Could be lovely. You also have the new moon coming in Aries around the same time, also in the fifth house. So really planting those seeds of intention for some great springtime, new breath of fresh air through your fifth house space here. Now on the 17th, Saturn is going to go retrograde and on the 22nd, Pluto is going to go retrograde. While both of these planets are relatively subtle in their retrograde, I still think they're pretty important to talk about. The retrograde is going to be happening in your second house. So what Saturn and Pluto have been doing, most specifically Saturn, has he's been coming along since December and saying, here's the cracks in your financial value, self-esteem, material situation. This is not working out. We need to adjust here so that you can spiritually grow and mature and we can achieve full success. And Pluto has said, this has to die off so that something else can live in this area. So for the next five months while these guys are asleep, the expectation is really that they have shown you what's not working. They have let you feel what's not working in your finances, your budget, your value, how you're being treated, how your self-esteem is maybe holding you back. And you use this five months to be enlightened, to let it be a rewarding time of insight and you do something with it. Take action. Use this Mars and Capricorn at the beginning of the month. Take that mature action to achieve some success to help fill in these cracks or to rebuild a new foundation, okay? So the next five months are going to be great. They're absolutely phenomenal for house cleaning, letting go of old ideas, old beliefs, old patterns, things like that. And it's subtle, so you're not going to do it overnight. It will take all five months. On the 19th, the sun is going to move over with Venus into Taurus, lighting up your sixth house space. So this is great because it brings you some vitality, some harmoniousness, some diplomacy in the workspace. This is really good, too, if you do anything freelance because your material can be read, your work can be read, you can be well received. This is a good place for health. If you've got to make some health decisions, you've been looking at at maybe changing your health routine in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of sun vitality here. So the changes you'll make will be about bringing more life, and they're likely pretty well directed as well. On the 24th, Venus then moves on and moves into Gemini, into your seventh house. Okay, when we get Venus in the seventh house, we've got good stuff for relationships, business partnerships, friendships, one-on-one -on -one relationships, a relationship with you, with you, wherever the one-on-one -on -one chosen conscious relationships are at, Venus is going to bring some sensuality. There could be some romance on the table. It's a wonderfully romantic month for you, Sagittarius, with the fifth house and the seventh house. You've got good stuff going on. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you play. I hope you go out and you eat. Eat delicious, luxurious, Taurus-based food. <laughs> All of that good stuff. Now on the 29th, we've got a full moon happening at six degrees of Scorpio in a very positive aspect to the Sun and Saturn trine. And this is wonderful. This is in your 12th house space. This is great for getting things done in that deep cleaning that I was telling you about that's going to happen over the next five months. This is also a wonderful energy in that 12th house space to do some cleaning, clean out some things, look deeper, study deeper. If you're researching something, let's really get into the nitty gritty here if you're trying to hone your psychic sixth sense. Let's see if we can garner a little bit more information. It's a wonderful energy for study as well. But remember, the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So here in the quietest space of your chart, we're going to definitely make a shift. But whatever you're shifting and cleaning and pulling out of that very sacred closet is going to make space for something phenomenal to show up, give you a new place where there's less fear, less hold back, less escape, and a lot more connection to something absolutely big, creative, and divine. So I love what it's going to look like for you. I look forward to seeing what the actual translation of this looks like for you. So keep me posted in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next month.